What's going on, YouTube? My name is Vanu and welcome back to some King Core. If you have not seen the previous episode, go ahead and watch it right now. You know the drill. Anyways, let's get started. To be honest, I'm a little crunched up on time, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try to get a video in, anyways, you know, and just make it a little shorter. It's not like my videos aren't long, anyways, right? Anyways. 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 Oh, what the freak? They decided it was time for them to head home. Wait, what? Already? Bro, are you crying? Yeah. Oh, wait a second. Huh? I brought a scarf from my room and wrapped it around Torio's neck. Give it back on New Year's. Don't get it dirty. Torio's got a bad habit of licking or gnawing on scarves if they cover his mouth. So take it away from him if he starts doing that cheka. Cheka. Thanks. We saw them both off. Great. Oh yeah, this should be the last episode of Reynoru, and if not, the next one for sure. I'm going off on guessing, so yeah. Ah, yes. Of course. Yeah. Pillow. Why don't we choose the biddies as the pillow? They look far more comfortable. Anyways, sorry. Yeah, not at all. I nuzzled my cheek against Reyna's belly. The way Reyna naturally pet my head when I suck it up to her felt wonderful. The way I see it, as long as I made it through Noble Academy in one piece, I'd become a civil servant. Say, la la la. <laughs> as long as I made it through Noble Academy in one piece, I'd become a civil servant and be set for life. And I believed it could bring me happiness. But there's a part of me that also believes that isn't enough. I don't want to lead an ordinary. I don't want to lead an ordinary life anymore. I don't want to just act cool. I wanted to be cool. That was a lie. I couldn't act the part even if I wanted to. There's no way I'd be able to pull it off, and that was all there was to it. I want to lead a cool life and be envied and respected by everyone around me. I think you, I think you really were envied like an episode ago, but I couldn't do it. Yeah. Judging from Reyna's tone, she wasn't attempting to console me. Had Reyna experienced the same sort of failure I had? That was a small relief and of itself, but I couldn't help but feel pathetic for it. I realized it today, but I was content with that line of thinking so long as Torio was there. I was satisfied since he was doing well for himself. Maybe it's that kind of feeling you get where, even if you hate putting in the effort, you don't care as long as your favorite celebrity succeeds? It's surprising though, when did I turn into a middle-aged man? Reyna softly brushed her fingers through my hair. <sighs> this was so soothing. If not for her, I might have cried again. I know just how pathetic I was. I finally got my life together, but wanted Dorio to have enough adventures to make up for it. Wanting to live vicariously through him does make me sound pretty pathetic, though. <laughs> Uh, I mean, the fame does sound cool and like being all pro and stuff, but I mean, if he's gonna be miserable, then why? Exactly, it was a shock. Thought he was about to go down the road to stardom and I wanted nothing but the best for him. Unfortunately, it wasn't a decision I could very well criticize. He wanted to walk along a steady path, just like I'd done. Dorio could lead a cushy lifestyle so as long as he stayed in Japan and didn't get hurt. Once he met everyone's expectations after reaching stardom, then he could go to the major leagues in the United States whenever he wanted. Who knows whether he'd be able to avoid getting hurt, but it'd be a heftier gambit if he up and moved to America now. I couldn't very well convince him to go abroad when I had chosen to live a stable life here. <sighs> this was depressing. I rubbed my face into her belly once more. 
But this time, Reyna didn't pet my head. She went straight for my cock. ね。まあ、トラウマってやつだよね。私にはそういうのないからよくわかんないけど。お昼に来たあの人たち見てるとさ、夏にオーロがしたことってやっぱり後悔することじゃなかったと思うんだよ。うん、I スマイリングフェイススプランドマインドだからさそんなバランス取るとかそういう言い訳はもういいと思うんだオーロはしたいようにすればいいそれが一番かっこいいよオーロのこと一番知ってる私が保証するナイスレイナでテラピストおいん
I fell on Christmas Eve, but it didn't stick. Wasn't that the best outcome you could ask for? By the way, Akane-chan, were you not going home to visit your folks? <laughs> Slacker. Cleaning, huh? That's not good. You need to stick to a schedule, otherwise you'll never finish. Facts. You tell her. I mean him. No, we're good. Ah. Fire! Oh, oh no. What's she doing now? Did he just go die? Why? We started off without with a group jog. I needed to get my body back into shape first. Same. Then, around the time I finished my warm-up, I haven't gone to the gym since August of last year. I feel fat. And I'm literally the exact same way. I know what's going on. Good reminder, Odo. Thanks. Then, around the time I finished my warm-up. Ah. What do you want, bummy? I'm... What do you want, Debbie Downer? I met Ellison. Any news? Hi. Oh, Ellison arrived with a rugged-looking black man in tow. John Smith. John Smith. Hi. Hello. This had to be just the man I asked for. You're a lifesaver. Oh, are you worn out? Good, she deserves it. She's always been such a mom. And not the good kind. <laughs> I'm really, really sorry. Yes, sir. I mean, ma'am. Will do. Although there was no telling how this would all pan out, I was putting my faith in him, in Mr. John Smith, the anonymous black man who sounds very Japanese. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. Uh, eight. Uh, nine. Ten. What are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm fine. Sorry I dropped you. Did he sit on his back? Did she sit on his back? Let's go again. So hop on. Hey yo. <laughs> I got her characters moving up. <laughs> hey. One. No clue, but I figured a heavy load couldn't hurt. <laughs> Look, she's doing it again. <laughs> she looks so stupid. <laughs> Sorry, Rando's butt was super soft, so I definitely don't mind. Oh no. Nah, I'd probably get hurt otherwise. <laughs> this was rough. Ryo's butt felt nice too, though. I thought he was about to say she feels bony because she's like tiny. She looks very tiny. Whoops. One. Now they're both hopping. It's funny. Oh, <laughs> ほら、聞こえる<笑> <laughs> She's way too relaxed. <laughs> Boom. Curse smack? What's going on? <laughs> Yakuno 
You'd have an easier time seeing them if you go with the batting cage. I doubt they'd go this fast though. Hey! <laughs> John. Uh, 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 yes. Yes. Okay, okay. I like how the, the text is a little different too. That's funny. My arms were, my arm was on pins and needles even with the baseball glove for cushioning, but I threw the ball back. Curse smack. I had him throw another pitch. Playing catcher for the first time in forever. Ouch! It was tough work to catch a ball going 160 kilometers per hour. Well, I'd give it a shot anyway. Oh, okay, I see. It's for the whole baseball thing, huh? It's, it's for his homie! I respect that, I respect that. Oh, whoops. <laughs> One. Two. Bro, he's. <laughs> He's just gonna get every girl on him. Hey yo. Jogasaki was just about perfect. No, nothing wrong with that. Sorry, sorry. Three. I got Jogosaki to help me out for the day. Not that I'd ever say to her face, but her plump ass ah, felt incredible against my back. <laughs> oh no, please. Please, can't we get a break from this? <laughs> Stop. Or. F f what? Ew. What is she doing on my back? Get her off! What's <laughs> up with this dude? He's lo he looks like he's having a little too much fun. What's going on with him? Bro had some weed. Oro <laughs> Interesting, interesting. Yes, yes. New Year's Eve. You know, I thought it was going to be over from Christmas, but uh, maybe after New Year's Eve? Sunny skies all around. And thank goodness for that. Strong winds would have been our biggest problem. <sighs> I pushed myself too hard this week. I did get myself back in decent shape though. Oh yeah, I guess that is her first. Hmm, guess so. I wasn't very cool, huh? That's so? Uh, I guess it worked out. I won't do it again. From now on, I'd lead a moderate and uneventful life. Today and never again. Oro. Hey, Torio showed up a little past noon just like we promised. Chieka was with him. Perfect! This conversation was just as important for him. Torio sat down the paper bag with my scarf in it. Ah, the scarf was just an excuse to get him back. I brought them with me outside. <laughs> Probably, but don't worry about it. I'm friends with a princess. We can cheat using her lord, lord la, la, royal authority, so the school will let something this minor go. Has she not met Sylvie? What's going on? Oh, did I not tell you, Chica? Here, take a look. Showed her the selfie I took a while back of Sylvie and I hugging. <laughs> you know her? Funny Chieka know that I knew that in a different universe she got to play a song with the princess. Nice. Her reaction was way more entertaining than Torio's. Setting that aside for now, Sylvie's arrival was right on time. Ah, ah, Elisan trailed behind her along with, along with. 
<laughs> Good to see you. John Smith, son. <laughs> On that note. So we another son knew, but this was Torio's first time meeting him and he was nothing short of confused. John Smith was an alias. I hadn't heard his real name, but... You don't know? Huh? You don't recognize him? Knowing Torio, he probably did. I, at least, posed that question to him either way. He took a good look at him. <laughs> and shook his head. That's so. Even someone like Torio, who had been a baseball fanatic his entire life, didn't recognize a fellow athlete. Probably just the sort of athlete we were dealing with. I heard he's a minor league 3A pitcher. A pitcher from the minor leagues, a lower division of the major leagues. It wasn't too shocking he didn't know him. For what it was worth, John Smith's son was a professional baseball player signed under formal contract. In fact, his credentials were so impressive that taking work outside of his team was a breach of contract and he was utilizing an alias. Straight ball tops out of 160 K 163 KPH. He can't output at 160 kilos pretty frequently too. He's been stuck in the triple A leagues due to his lack of stability. And he's only gotten to play in the majors twice in the, in the six years of playing professionally. It was awfully rude of me to talk about Smith's son that way. But it didn't matter much since he didn't speak Japanese. <laughs> Alright. Had he pieced together what I wanted to say? Dorio grimaced. He flew in a few days ago and he played for a bit. As a pitcher, he's light years better than you. And even then, he can't even seem to make it in the majors. I guarantee it, you aren't some prodigal, prodigal, prod, prodigal pitcher. Oh. That's my opinion as someone who's been with him for a decade. Trust me. You might become a star if you stayed in Japan, especially if you can pitch at 160. I bet the media would sing his praises if he did. But that won't fly abroad. Triple A was the most he could expect. Making it into the Triple A league in the majors was, of course, an outstanding achievement. But it wasn't a fitting accolade for his talents. True enough. That was an unknown variable. It wasn't for me to nitpick and I did think it was possible he might pull it off somehow with his skills. But I think it's futile. It's better if you focus solely on taking the field. That's why I personally think it'd be better if you trained in America than to continue to pitch under your current coach. Oh, okay. He's trying to convince him to get out of here. Okay, cool, cool. There you have it, Chieka. He's going to America. I won't tell you to go with him, but if you do, wait until you graduate and study English in the meantime. There's a chance some blonde girl with huge booby -bee 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 bitties could snag him while he's over there, but that would be out of our control. Virgin no marriage, I respect that. <laughs> Yeah, seriously, Odo. Jeez. Put me at a disadvantage when you put it that way. You're right, but... Put it on. I tossed him a baseball glove I'd borrowed from the academy. Came with a ball, of course. And a bat. Why don't we have a three-pitch show then? I grabbed the bat and pointed it straight at Torio. I'd give me a chance to prove that you've got no talent as a pitcher. Torio didn't hesitate to put the glove on. Nope, I've detested to even see the B in baseball ever since. In spite of what he said, he was grinning from ear to ear. The more he dropped his guard, the better. I headed for the edge of the field toward the batter's box. Why is our homie defending us instead of our girl? <laughs> and even there, why are we letting them defend us? God dang, the homies really came through. Don't tell him. I wanted to throw him off his game. Is a wick really enough though? I told you, don't say it. Jeez. 
They suck. Ah, ah. Smith son, if you would, please. At Smith son, who I asked to be our catcher, put on his mitt. His primary position was as a pitcher, but I was sure he could at least stop a pitch. Once our preparations were in order. He headed for the mound. The match was on. Tension and kill the bat. I was going to say and seized. Why? In case the field. <laughs> but he managed to take a momentary break. I told you not to say anything. I wanted to establish whatever small advantage I could. <laughs> Man, Dorio limbered up with some stretches and light sprints. I had been stretching since this morning, so any advantage I had given me was gone. What a nightmare. Cherka looked for an opening to speak. Huh? You don't have to do anything. You should be on his side. This isn't a matter of neither of, of either of us being right or wrong. It wasn't as if either of us were in the right, namely Torio's desire to stay and my wanting him to go abroad. Nothing was especially odd about him trying to lead a stable, well-balanced life. At the end of the day, he didn't have the proper mindset to fulfill his duties as a pitcher and it was too dangerous for him to undergo the coach's reckless training regimen. I believe the best choice was for him to go to the majors. Above all else, I wanted him to go. And that was why we would settle it with a match. That was all. Sure. Once I exited the box, Dorio pitched into Smith's hands ready and waiting glove with zero hesitation. His first throw made one heck of a crack and likely exceeded 150. So he isn't injured then. <laughs> it would have made me happier if he was in some pain. Being in peak condition was one of the best things a baseball player could hope for and Dorio had that in spades. Nice. Satisfying. He single-mindedly threw a ridiculously perfect pitch. That was another talent of his. <laughs> Why is Bro apologizing? Wow! <laughs> he was impressive enough that surprise a professional athlete. Yeah. Head back to the batter's box. I'd consider it a win if I land a single hit. You should be able to tell whether or not it's hittable, I'd assume. Ah. He wasn't one to slip in his regard, in this regard. I'll also win if you walk me. It's all over on ball three. Dario gripped the ball. I also took my position. Rain and Chieka cleared away. Dario raised his arm overhead. And the match began. Smack. Seconds later, a thunderous whack roared from the mid behind me. So fast. Yeah. Zero balls, one strike. I was soft judging, but I had no intention of falsifying anything. Not when it came to umpiring, anyway. Dunk. He threw the second pitch. I followed the same straight path once more. I took my shot. My bat reciprocated with a fierce swing. Bap, bap. But the ball thudded pathetically as it rolled the <laughs> to the side. <laughs> That's nice. Two strike. I had been promptly cornered. Uh, never thought I'd lose with a metal bat. To be honest, I should have had the upper hand due to the metal bat I was using. Regardless, Dodio's 160 pitch was formidable. Although I landed a direct hit, I must have mis missed mi bleh, mistimed it by a fraction of a second and veered off to the side. You really got me this time. I like the little anticipation here. He threw a back to back pitch. If I were to strike out now, it was all over. Mm -hmm. Everything had gone according to plan so far. I swung again, and the ball rolled behind me. No way, bro.
you mean? He had pitched all three balls straight down the center. He wasn't going to beat me with this. And then... Dunk. The next pitch. Landed in Smith's hands. Man. The ball went into the mid, but Dorio looked disgruntled. That was only natural. It nearly grazed the ground. Helen knows a lot. One ball, two strikes. What's wrong? Get cold feet? <laughs> I bet he came to score an empty swing. He had luckily launched a curveball, but I hadn't swung. <laughs> Dunk. He pitched another. It was in the strike zone this time, but it simply grazed my bat and rolled behind me. <laughs> another pitch. This one grazed the bat and rolled as before. <laughs> got him. You got him. <laughs> On the next ball, I didn't swing. Bam. The sound as it hit the mitt was somewhat quiet. <laughs> A ball, of course. Two balls and two strikes. He had veered too far to the side. He wasn't one to complain at this point, so he immediately prepared for the next. He was a simple guy. If he was going to go pro, he would need to at least be petty in these scenarios. Dunk. On the eighth pitch, it rolled onto the ground once again. Yeah, that's what I said. That's what I was thinking. Hold up. Precisely. There was a distinct flaw in the rules of this match. There was no referee. The two of us both acted as empires, even though I hadn't planned on mine. Nobody was there to hold me, the batter, accountable. I had merely swung at any balls that came into the strike zone, otherwise I'd relax and remain still. Dodio's blazing fastball would incontestably knock my swing away, but it would still hit and ensure they were all foul balls. If there were any if there were an umpire, they would surely notice when my bat suddenly stopped and I'd be out due to a foul bunt. Dorio couldn't tell when the self-judging and Smith's son had agreed not to say a word. I mean, yeah, that man was playing dirty. But it was his fault for not verifying the accuracy of those calls. The discern when the opponent had broken the rules was an important quality to have in baseball. And... <laughs> Dunk. The ninth pitch. Dorio's pitch. Oh. Ah, not good. Landed in the catcher's mitt in an exceptionally perfect position. From both Chieka and Reina's point of view, who vaguely knew the rules of the game, that ball was nothing short of perfect. Even Smith's son had acknowledged it was a strike. I also agreed from my perspective. That marked the third strike and my loss. But no, it was fine. Three balls and two strikes. A full count, huh? As long as I sounded fully confident. Huh? Dorio would obediently proceed to the next pitch. Chieka, Reyna, and even a pro like Smith's son acknowledged it as a strike. But Dorio hadn't. That much I could tell. This was a little too cheap, so I really ought to tell him. I told you this before. Fix that habit of yours already. That habit where your nostrils fly and you lean forward when you try to pull a fast one at someone. I was likely the only one in the whole world who noticed. The greatest flaw in this guy's pitching wasn't his lack of stability. The fact he always threw straight balls or anything remotely technical. It was his facial expressions, his tell, gave away his next pitch. This guy who'd gotten this far on the merits of his straight balls speed since he was little naturally assumed it was his job to pitch into the strike zone. Flipped around, that meant he was averse to my pitches outside the strike zone to bait on this swing. It showed on his face unintentionally. That his heart wasn't in pitches not intended to strike his opponent out. His expression gave away any throws meant the bait and empty swing. Those outside, the strike zone. He had thrown earlier with the same type of look on his face. It may have been a careless pitch that went into the strike zone, but inside he considered it a ball. Which was why he agreed his pitch was a ball as long as I said so. His one other weakness was... The next will be the last. Just maybe? Bring it on. 
I retook my position. Dorio grasped the ball. This guy seriously had no talent as a pitcher. His other flaw was curly on his face. The second I said this pitch would be the last, he automatically got into the mood to sell it all with his single throw. With this single throw. It was too honest. That weakness was written all over his face. His expression of a man with glittering eyes read, Bet it on his showdown. This showdown. That face told me everything. In this next pitch, dunk. He would avoid a straight ball while being vigilant of fouls and yet still go for the strike. He hurled the stuffless curb onto the strike zone. Unlike every pitch before, I swung with all my might. I didn't spare any of my strength any longer. I couldn't hit a 160 kph straight ball, but if the pitch had no stuff behind it, <laughs> nice. <laughs> that ball tore through the far off azure New Year Eve sky. Nice, nice, nice. Bam. So we and the rest watched that ball which transcended the academy's fence like it was a grand spectacle. Only Dorio failed to watch. There was no need to look. He could tell from the sound. I knew it too. I guess hit ability wasn't even a factor. They said a good pitcher could tell when a home run was struck by the sound alone. He may have had the talent of a good pitcher in this one attribute. I headed over to Torio who looked marginally on the verge of tears. I wouldn't really call this a bat. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really call this a bat. I wouldn't tell you to go to the majors just because I won. I just think that if you're going to go pro in the future, it'd be best if you held yourself in high regard, not as a pitcher, but as a fielder, just like I have. Think the rest through on your own. Once the others realized the match was over, they all gathered around. So his face screamed, you were incredible, huh? No? But she obviously didn't say it when she noticed Dodio's expression. Cherko also came over and... ちょっと don't let the blonde women with large bitties get you. <laughs> with that, Torio's stiff expression and relaxed. Come on, man. If you're going to be so moved by a single comment from your girlfriend, was there any need for a match? メンタルリセットとかできなくてそれでも早く投げるのはできたからやってこれたけどプロの世界で通じるとは思ってなかったトリオ本当はもっと早くインドを渡して欲しかったのかもお前にrest easy you've got the makings of a batter watch and swing at any ball that comes your way head on that's where your talent son brightest you have my guarantee He must have made up his mind. He gave a tiny nod, then turned to Chieka. Oh, crap. <laughs> Sorry. You absolutely can. Do it. Those guys actually want you to go. That's why they came and told me. The coach and geezers on the committee would definitely be in the tizzy, but it served them right, as far as I was concerned. So I didn't mention it. Oro. Yeah? Huh? I mean, it's not like I mind the idea. But don't they tend to decide that stuff last second? Not to mention the time difference abroad and whatnot. That's fast. <laughs> Not happening. That's a 12 hour round trip. It wasn't exactly the most serviceable distance. Not to mention how uncomfortable it would make me to borrow a private jet from royalty for my personal use. 
True, true. I, I do promise to at least be there for your debut match. ファーストクラスしかないわ。ああ、あの、もちろんいいわよ。というか、あなたたちが専用で使えるよう飛行機を何台立ってる。わあ。できればよね、エル。That's <笑><笑> It was about how Buddy and I could strike a balance between our differences. Dang. Minachan came too? <laughs> お味噌かは好き焼きだよね。俺たちもいただいちゃっていいの？チャダン、スーパーパイシーミ。登録。なんであのパレーカの新生と呼ばれるカミナル様がメイドさんしてるの？Since <laughs> Wow. We all had a tightly knit meal together. Raw egg is so good. In the midst of it all. What's wrong? Not gonna eat? If you're not going to eat, feel free not to. I'll eat your meat. So you can stick with the tofu and shit. That pause, 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 pause. I'll eat your meat. So you can stick with the tofu and shit. <laughs> God dang, dude. <coughs> that was a sneeze, thanks. I'm sorry. Huh? Thanks. <laughs> Absolutely. Ah, guess not. This had become clear to me time and time again this month, but no academy was where I belong now. My time here was so much fun. This is the place I found my golden time. Make sure you go find your own. Ah. Nice, that was a good line. That had to be what mattered most in life. To search for the golden color within you. To search for a place in time you could be golden. And to make sure it didn't get away from you once you found it. I believe that was anyone's most precious adventure. And how you best struck a balance. Crap. Let's eat, do you? Oh. We went back to the sukiyaki. Huh? Sorry, Reyna, can you speak up? Hmm? Reyna and Sylvie were discussing something or other. It was tough to hear, and for that matter, I was too busy with the sukiyaki to lend an ear. What was it, though? Ah, uh, yes. We're gonna be nosy. <sighs> The timer is actually about to run now in 10 seconds and I have a feeling that it's going to end and we're going to have that long credit scene and stuff. So like, I think I'm going to pause it here since the timer is about to go off anyways. Uh, but my, I could feel the ending coming and I don't like that, but I do because I'm ready to move on. You know, it's been a, it's been a while, but I'm so glad that this route felt long because for example, in Cafe Stella, like I've talked about it before, I don't know if you guys 
kept up or have any idea what I'm talking about, but there was a route which was I think Suzune, I think that's her name. There was Suzune's route in Cafe Stella. And Suzune was a character that I really liked out of all the maidens and maidens, what? All the characters and Cafe Stella. And I was so salty for the longest time ever because they made her route so short. Like it was criminal. I was so ticked off. I was like, why? Literally, why? I hope May's route is as short as Suzume's because if May's route is still longer than Suzume's, I'm going to be very salty because I don't even like May like that. And if you know who May is, she's also one of those characters in Cafe Stella. And she has purple hair, I think. She's not a bad character, but I prefer Suzume. And they made her very, very... They, they limited her very bad. <laughs> like her root. It could have been so much more, you know? But man, whatever. But anyways, going back to Reyna, I'm glad it was a... It felt like a decently long route, you know? I had a lot of fun in this route. It was the wildest route I've played so far <laughs> like seriously it was the it was the wildest dude i played so far uh reyna forever will be up there it's it's just been so fun it's been such a ride I, i've loved every single moment of this and i really like to see that we got to see more of torio you know and this time i thought it was interesting that they didn't mention this time i mean they still could you know that the route hasn't officially ended but i'm surprised they still haven't mentioned that chieka is you know his odo's sibling sister you know, I, f I find that interesting, but I also found it cool that they decided to show more of Dorio and, you know, get more into detail about what's going on and whatnot, you know, because the way I look at it, and I've talked about this before in visual novels, all these roots are like different, like I look at it as like different dimensions. It's just very fun to see like, oh, if I go this way, what happens here? Oh, but if I go this way, what happens here? You know, and that's the roots. So I think that's very fun. It's a very fun concept to me, but okay, I'm done ranting. I'm out of here. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of King Koi. We're about to finish Reina's route in the next episode. 100% sure this time it's about to end. Sad, but also happy, but mostly sad. But I'm happy that I got to play it and it, it's been fun. It's been a ride. And I hope you guys have enjoyed it as well and have been enjoying these episodes as well. Anyways, I'm out of here. Thank you so much for watching once again. I really do appreciate it. Please let me know if you enjoyed this video by hitting that lick. Subscribe and if you haven't already done so, share this video. It would really help me out and my self-esteem. Anyways, I'm out of here. I'll see you guys in the next one. Y'all stay safe, and as always, until next time.